Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm doing a mixed media art journal page tutorial and I'm going to be using some stamps, some stencils and some Distress Oxide inks and I'm going to be walking you through exactly how I created this page in my art journal. So here's my page and as uh, usual I have just taped down the centre, in, 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 down the centre of the spine in between the two pages with a piece with a bit of masking tape so that it just protects the underneath pages from any ink seeping through because I am going to be using uh, spritzing this page with some water a bit later on and then I'm grabbing the three distress oxide inks I'm using uh, picked raspberry cracked pistachio and frayed burlap and I'm sort of just smooshing them onto the page now I'm trying to evenly distribute the colors but I'm not worrying too much about blending them together because I don't want them all to be muddy in one colour I want, but I want them to be blended a little bit so I'm blending a tiny bit round the edges but I'm not worrying too much about the overall look because this is the first layer and I'm going to be going over with some more ink after I've put, laid down the colours to brighten up some areas and I'm also about to spritz the pages with some water so it really doesn't matter um, if the ink is patchy in places so here I'm just grabbing some pieces of scrap paper and placing them under my pages so that it just protects the desk and everything and I'm just spritzing the pages with a little bit of water and I also closed um, smooshed the pages together in order to blend things even more and I'm just dabbing off some excess now one thing about using masking tape in your art journal is that the masking tape tends to resist paints and inks particularly if you get things wet so that is a bit of a downside to using the masking tape when you're creating a double page spread. I actually quite I actually quite like the way the page is cut in half and I do cover up the masking tape later on, but I want you to be aware that if you are using masking tape to protect your pages, then um, you it can sometimes resist the media you put on top. So I'm just drying everything with my heat gun and you can see the colors are shifting and changing. And they've they've toned down a little bit and they've um, because just dis distress oxide inks have uh, very special properties and when you get them when you spritz them with water or get them wet they oxidize and they the, the colors can shift and you can get some very interesting looking effects what I would just did there is I went ahead and I used um, some gesso to kind of just add some texture marks and just to create a little bit of background texture to the page and I was using one of Jane Davenport's um, mermaid paint brushes the tail end of it to create those marks so now I'm going to uh, do some stamping and I've grabbed some Bow Bunny uh, texture stamps and I'm going to be just using the same inks as I was before so I'm just going to be stamping quite randomly but again I'm building up layers and that's what I'm always doing with these sort of pages it's all it's all just a question of building up layers and adding textures upon textures and um, this this is going to take a couple of moments so I just want to tell you that I'm actually using a prompt list for today's page I'm using the take five prompts and this uh, this particular challenge was created by Kyra I'll leave a link to her channel in the description box because um, she has a really lovely channel um, I particularly enjoy watching her videos and we've done some collabs um, in the past she's tested some of my products and done some um, lovely uh, projects using some of my uh, graphics and designs and she does this monthly collab with a group of other youtubers now I'm not officially part of the the group as it were um, but anyone can join in and do the prompt list it's just a prompt list is just a way of sparking some inspiration to get you started on your art journal pages so the five prompts for the, the ones that I'm using in this video are stamps texture paste scribbles flowers and stencils so so far I've done the stamps and the stencil and I'm using the rising bubble stencil here with the distress oxide ink um, it didn't work really well I didn't get a very good impression because the sponge I was using wasn't great for stenciling but it's mixed media I'm layering up I want textures it doesn't matter if it's not perfect and all all that stamping and stenciling I was doing I was just using the exact same inks that I used in the background and because you can see they're slightly darker on top because when I spritzed uh, the pages with water on that first layer when the inks oxidize they normally turn a little bit lighter so you can actually go over the top with these inks and layer them up and create some really interesting effects and I'm just just using the same three colors because they are layerable and they are they're a pigment ink so you um 
they're not transparent you can layer them up so now I've got my little uh, bag of collage elements and all of these different elements are elements from the Windy Iris collage collection and um, I'll leave links to all the all the all the listings in my shop where you can go check them out if you'd like to see more information on the different products here I'm I ended up using a sticker from a collage sticker from the fashion set and some flowers and leaves from the no just just flowers actually I didn't end up using any leaves so I used the fashion sticker and I used um, some flowers from the digital the flowers digital stamp set and I like to keep all my collage elements in a little bag near my desk so that when I need something to accent a page I can grab things out place things on and just see what works and I actually like to go ahead and pre-cut out things as well sometimes if I have some time in the evening I will just sit and just cut out things for half an hour watch something and just cut things out and that way I have all my little embellishments little digital stamps little stickers and everything all ready to go when I'm working on my page because it does uh, speed up the process a little bit um, you do, sometimes when you're working on a page it's nice to have pre-cut things ready so you don't have to spend lots and lots of time uh, fussy cutting things out so I've chosen uh, the fashion sticker because the pink and the teal matches my colour scheme that I have going on on my page and when you're working on an art journal page it's always a good idea to work in limited colours I think I've mentioned this before in other videos so if you just pick three main colours and stick to them um, not including white I like to use white as an accent color but if you if you pick three main colors and stick to them and use different medias then you can normally create quite a cohesive looking page that way so I'm using my Copic markers here and I'll leave a, a list of the exact colors I used in the description box I'll put all the supplies I used in the description box if you want more information and I'm using the pink and the teal colors to color in these digital stamps and one of the nice things about using digital stamps is that, well for me at any rate, is that I can print them out whatever size I want and however many I want. So this, I was able to print out multiple versions of those little flowers, then I was able to print out the daisy type flowers much bigger and cut them in half. I was able to really... Um, really just print things out exactly how I wanted and even if you don't have now I'm using Photoshop to re resize things because I have it but if you don't have Photoshop you could if you have a set of digital stamps and you want to print them out bigger and smaller you could just use Microsoft Word you can Im insert the pictures the JPEGs into my into a Microsoft Word document and just upsize them and downsize them and create um, print out as many as you need uh, for your project so if you just wanted loads and loads of daisies for a particular project you could grab the daisy digital stamp and in in the sets that I sell everything is individual JPEGs. so you can just grab the one flower you want place it lots and lots of times on a, on a word document and then print it out so there are lots of options that I just wanted to mention that now I'm not going too crazy with the shading because I didn't want to spend too much time on the shading, especially as some of the flowers would be hidden, but I wanted to add a little bit of something. So I'm just using a slightly darker pink to add some texture into the flowers and then a slightly darker teal to do the same thing uh, with the teal colored flowers. And all in all, this art general page took me about an hour, I think, to complete. It took me uh, about an hour and a half in total because I kept having to stop and think about it and I think when you're doing an art journal page that's probably what takes the most time to be honest it's not the physical creating it's the stopping thinking about things playing around and just kind of considering what you're going to do next so what I decided uh, you can see I'm playing around a lot and I do encourage that if you're a beginner at art journaling if you're just play around move things around and just keep playing until you find something that looks really nice and I went ahead and I grabbed this um, it's a little bit of like lace ribbon that I had lying around and I thought it it gave such a an elegant dainty feel to the page so I glued that over that ugly bit of masking tape and then I had a little bit left over so you can see me playing around with different layouts and in the end I decided to cut that strip of ribbon in half and then just have one piece on one page and then one piece on the other and it's one of the I really like adding strips of 
paper or ribbon to my pages and laying them down in horizontal strips just to kind of break up the composition of the page because you've got a lot going on in the background and you almost want to create another layer on top of the background to kind of uh, help separate the foreground images from the background if, if if that makes any sense. Um, so that's why I particularly like to create these horizontal strips. You often see me uh, using uh, horizontal strips in my art journal pages and I actually have, um, I have a, a whole collection of collage strips that I use, that I have on my Etsy shop, but I use them in my art journal to create these kind of um, focal points to help the background stay in the background then to help the foreground images lift up from that. So I glued all my little pieces down once I was happy with the arrangement with some um, mono, the Tombow Mono Aqua Glue. Really, that's a really nice glue. If you haven't tried that for um, uh, art journaling, it's very strong and I find that it dries quite quickly as well. So now I'm going ahead and I applying some texture paste. That was one of the prompts. So I, I did stamps, I did uh, stencils, I have lots of flowers on the page and I'm using this little um, stencil and texture paste to create this another layer, another nice white, slightly transparent layer. I find that the texture paste from Ranger is very slightly transparent so it adds a nice subtle uh, texture and a little bit of extra design but without it being so opaque that it overpowers the page and I really liked the effect of the flower stencil and I'm again I'm drying it with my heat gun you could of course leave your art journal to dry um, naturally I mean without the heat gun you don't have to use the heat gun and that's quite nice now because I'm filming I I don't want to leave the um, camera and have to move the tripod around so I like to complete my art journal pages when I'm filming in one sitting but I think it's quite nice that if you get to a point in your page where you, you feel like you're a bit stuck, then go away and leave it. You know, just leave it to rest for a while, then come back and have a look at it and see what you can do next. I think it's quite nice to take breaks from it every now and then, if, uh, particularly if you're working on a particularly uh, long-winded page. And the last prompt was to make some scribbles. So I took a white paint pen, no, a white paint over pen and a... Um, pink paint pen and I just added some little swirls and, and tiny little marks. I didn't want to do too much because I was afraid to be honest at this point of messing up the page because it was so close to being done. So that's the finished page. You can see all the layers of texture and how the colours came together and I think um, sticking with three colours or sticking with limited colours is so important when you're doing these sorts of pages. I find that if I don't it ends up a mess. That's just my personal preference. You can of course do however you want but I do find if you're especially if you're beginning sticking with three colours is a really um, good way to start. So anyway I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Please make sure you leave any questions you have in the comments below and check out Kyra's channel if you want more information about the Take 5 uh, challenge. So I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.